The new film Justice League Dark has just been released and the film starts with the Justice League, meaning Superman and Batman and the rest of the League who we're more familiar with as they've been in pretty much all the DC's latest films. Though thankfully most of the characters from the Justice League disappear pretty quick. The capes and tights crew, useless against dark magic. In fact in Aquaman's case he doesn't even have any lines. However the exception to this is Batman who sort of founds the Justice League Dark and is in the film throughout. Now, all the recent DC films seem to be about Batman and his son Damian Wayne. In fact, the recent Teen Titans vs Justice League film, which of course was supposed to be about the Teen Titans, was pretty much just the Damian Wayne show, with the other characters not really being that important at all. It was all about Damian Wayne, which in my opinion was the movie's biggest flaw. Now, Warner Bros does this for one reason. Batman and Damian Wayne are the most popular and therefore most profitable characters they have, and so they put them in the films to make more money even though they are really oversaturated in the market at this point. But they seem to have realised this in Justice League Dark, because although Batman is in the story throughout, he isn't really the focus of the plot, and his role seems to mainly consist of grunting a lot, and the occasional moment of being awesome. But I'm pleased to say that the movie doesn't focus on him greatly, but does focus on the actual members of the Justice League Dark. Well, mainly just Constantine, to be honest. Now, a cynical man would say that this wasn't for the story, but because Matt Ryan, who voices Constantine, is quite famous from his roles in the shows Arrow and Constantine, and as such, he is enough of a draw on his own to make the film profitable. So that means that the film can move away from the Bat family. But they want to keep Batman there just to edge their bets and keep people interested. And since I am a cynical man, that's why I think Warner Bros have actually done this. But I have to say, it really works. The story is quite compelling throughout and Constantine is pretty badass in the film. Now, I don't want to give away any of the film's plot for those who haven't seen it, but it has a few twists and turns and does definitely keep you interested. And the characters are themselves very interesting. Unfortunately, the only ones who are really developed are Constantine and Zatanna, and even then not greatly. A larger past between the two is made apparent, and they reference a lot of things they've done in the past. This is the monkey cage in Sumatra all over again. Ooh, we need to save the monkey, she said. Which really makes me hope there's a sequel where we explore this, because the two of them are really engaging on screen. It's just a shame that they couldn't have shown more of what they'd done in the past in this film. But I guess if they'd done that, the film would have been too long. As it is, it's only just over an hour. But for the rest of the Justice League Dark members, they don't really get much screen time and their roles feel more like cameos or maybe supporting roles, as Constantine and Zatanna are just given the most screen time. That being said, when the other members of Justice League Dark are on screen, they are spot on in their character and representation and are very interesting and engaging to watch. And I do recommend watching this film because I've actually enjoyed it more than most of the recent DC films. And if you're a fan of superhero animation, then this film is definitely worth watching. And even if you don't love it, you definitely won't regret watching it, and you won't be bored. Though in part, this may just be because it's different to the last DC animated films we've had, and it is a change that's been much needed, and I very much enjoyed it. And if you're a fan of the TV series Constantine, then you will love this, because Matt Ryan's Constantine is exactly the same character in the film as it was in the TV series. The magic I perform brings people happiness. Are you sure it's not the two drink minimum, love? And he does do a wonderful job of carrying the film. The musical score is different to most of the other DC animated films, a sort of mix of a mystical sound with techno, but again, it kind of works and is quite refreshing. <laughs> The only real drawback is, as I've said, the lack of screen time for the other Justice League Dark members, such as Deadman, Black Orchard, Etrigan and his human counterpart, and Swamp Thing. So if you're a fan of these characters, you may be a little disappointed with the film. In fact, Black Orchid is changed completely. It's the magic of the house. Decided it wanted to experience humanity and gave itself a body. So prepare yourself and lower your expectations for the other characters. But again, when they are on screen, they are pretty captivating. And it's great to finally see Warner Bros exploring more of the DC Universe, and not just the Justice League and the Bat Family. And hopefully this will be the beginning of seeing more of the DC Universe in animated films. And that is my review of Justice League Dark. It's a refreshing take on a new part of the DC Universe, at least a new part for DC Animation, 
And though it is different, if you like the films Batman Bad Blood or Justice League War, then you should fully enjoy Justice League Dark. And if you have seen the film, then please let us know what you thought of it in the comments, and if there's anything that you thought the film was lacking and should have changed, or should have also included. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.